My name is Eric Strebel, and welcome to another video of mine about industrial design. This is episode 10, the last episode in the Adventure Toy Rendering Series. Click on the screen here to watch some of the past episodes. I'm going to share with you how I did this retro style blue paper marker and pencil sketch of this SR-71 inspired spaceship. I did a fair amount of sketching on this concept over several days, working out the different details and the proportions and to get it to look the way that I wanted and to try to figure out the right view to show the overall concept of the spaceship. I even built a quick 3D model so I could get a real good handle on the right view that I wanted to show all the details in and get my perspective pretty close. I ended up using this sketch right here as my final view as the basis for my sketch. I start with a piece of Canson paper and a ruler line pretty much at a diagonal. I then draw the vanishing points that go off to the left and I start to pencil in the basic outline of the ship here in uh, with a white pencil. From there I start putting in the details, the cockpit, working out the uh, ram air on the bottom, how the wings go, putting everything together. Now something to note about Canson paper, it's going to have a tooth on one side that's pretty aggressive. You want to make sure that you use the flat side of the paper. Once I got the basic perspective and the view down that I want, I start laying in some simple color value with a color pencil and then I come back in here with a marker. And the marker, I'm just setting the tones. I'm adding all the dark darks, so the shadows underneath the wings, inside of the air scoops, and I'm getting things worked out. I've got a yellow light source from the right, so basically I'm coloring with light. So if you draw on a white piece of paper, you are drawing in the shadows, as the white is the whitest part. In this case, I'm drawing with a dark piece of paper, and I'm drawing with light, basically or coloring with light. So where the light is hitting the surface of this ship is where I'm adding the color. I end up having a blue light source come from the left and you'll see that a little bit later on in the rendering. I want to talk a little bit about the ship itself. It's inspired by the SR-71. Now this vehicle was uh, designed by a fellow named Kelly Johnson. Now when I say designed, he was a tool and die maker originally but he ended up being the head of the advanced development uh, product, uh, project at Lockheed when the SR-71 was uh, designed and built from scratch. Now, I doubt that he was in charge of the styling, uh, but he's attributed the design. Some of the cool features here that you see on the wings is it uses some sonic stabilizers. So it doesn't have a standard sort of tail rudder like many planes do but it has this sonic stabilizer in the wing so that it can uh, roll to the right and to the left and to help stabilize the vehicle. It's uh, Lemium powered, so it's using a highly advanced fuel source and it's got that nod to the SR-71 with the dual cockpits on the top. If you do happen to know who the stylist was on the SR-71, leave that in the comments below because I'm pretty curious about that. So I continue to add value to the sketch to build up uh, the surfaces. Here I'm coming back with the yellow light that's being cast on the craft. And it, there's a negative shape in the front, uh, in the nose, underneath uh, the cockpit. Um, I'm pretty uh, unhappy with the, how the light is uh, being shown on the chine here uh, just to the right and to the left of the cockpit so I come back and I add in uh, the highlights and I aggressively remove a lot of the yellow with a kneaded eraser and a regular eraser and I soften up some of the forms I add a pulse uh, exhaust here in the back with some pink and some purple and then that's reflected on the wings uh, itself, again, because we're painting with light here. Um, I add in and do some more of the details 
uh, to crisp things up and really find the pink and the purple in the back uh, helps give it some punch. Now I'm going to add sort of a space feel to this. I make a photocopy of the craft. Always wear a mask when you're spray painting. I use that photocopy as a mask over the image. I lay down a little bit of spray paint to give that little bit of a starry effect and to uh, do a little bit of a fade. Once I'm done with that, I'm coming back in with my gouache. I add a little bit of yellow toner uh, to add uh, the yellow color into the gouache for the highlights since we're painting with light. Um, we don't want to do it in white, I want it in yellow to be bright like that. Since I have my brush out, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Speedball Black to really darken up some of the black areas. You can see that it's uh, pretty well soaked up by the paper. Add a little bit of blue on the chine on the left side. I feel it's a little flat back there to give the uh, vehicle a little bit of form. Now I'm coming in here with some solvent. and the rendering has that retro feel because of the grain that you can see in the paper and the color pencil is not soaking into the paper uh, the way I want like you would on a regular marker or in a Photoshop render. I'm using a little bit of solvent to soften up and distribute that uh, color everywhere and I feel like it adds a lot of punch allows me to come back in and punch up the color some more Next, um, we're taking this thing uh, into a scanner, bring it into your photo editing software, and I'm just punching up some of the colors. I'm trying some stuff on the cockpits. I'm cleaning up some of the details, darkening some of the darks so I can make this thing really nice and punchy, fixing up some of the highlights here that you see um, so that the reflections read a little bit better, um, cleaning up some of the details. Uh, and just making it read like a design sketch should so that you can see all the details and understand what's going on. Here I'm fixing some of the needle nose uh, issues so the light falls right on that. I'm adding in a Motorhead logo because every awesome space vehicle needs a cool Motorhead logo added up here in the very front. And we're almost done. I'm going to go ahead and add some design notes here next to make it look like a design sketch. So you would add this to show it to a client, to have them understand how the toy or the device is put together and potentially manufactured. In a concept this is good to show some understanding of the product and how it actually goes together. Uh, the client really benefits from this and we'll give it a little title and we're just about done. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Adventure Toy rendering series. I had a lot of fun putting it together. Leave your comments below and keep your eye out for a lot of other design related videos that I have coming up in the near future. We're getting close to 2,000 subscribers, so thanks to everybody who subscribed so far. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on.